Hello and welcome to my second tutorial. Um, today we're going to look at how to make these concentric wavy cube type things. I'm not really sure how to explain them. This is going to be a fairly easy level tutorial. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of vex but it's nothing that's too difficult and also uh, it should be a fairly quick one. Uh, so with that let's get started. Okay, so diving into Houdini, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how this works on a 2D grid, um, just to visualize the theory behind it, and then we'll make it for a cube. So the first thing is make a geometry node and dive inside, and we're going to make a grid <clears throat> like this, and then let's have a scatter. So we're going to scatter some points on the grid, and these are going to be our seed points for the effect. So um, if we now just make a point wrangle, like so. So the first thing we want to do is, while we're running over every point in the grid, which is what the wrangle does, uh, we want to find which of our scattered seed points, and we can just uh, visualize those here. So which one of these points is closest to each one of the points on the grid? And to do that, we're going to use a vex function called near point. We want to store the number of that point inside uh, an integer. So if we make an integer called, um, I'm going to call it endpoint for near point, and it's going to equal near point, and it's one because it's the second input. The first one would be zero, and it's at p because that's the, the position we want to search. So now each one of these points on this grid is storing uh, whichever one of those points is nearest to it. And then we want to get the position of those points. So uh, we use a vector for that. So we call it vector, we're going to call it target pos, and that's going to equal um, point one p for position, and then the point number that we want the position for is endpoint and then what we want to do is we need to know the distance between our point that we're looking at and the position of the target point so to do that we make a float called dist and that's going to equal distance between at p and target pos whoops I caps locked there uh, at p and get pos there we go. And then to visualize that distance, we're going to say at p dot y equals the sine of dist. And now you'll see that we distort our plane. And it's really hard to see what's going on because we haven't got enough geometry. But if we add some rows, let's go with 100. So you can see what's happening. From each point, we're generating a sine wave which travels out in every direction. And now what we want to do is we want to modulate that sine wave. So to do that, we're going to need a frequency and an amplitude. So if we make a float called freq, and that's going to equal uh, CHF frequency. And then if we just copy that, and we're going to make another one that's called amp, like so. And that's going to be the amplitude. And the amplitude isn't so important for what we're doing, but um, it's nice to have it there. So if we set this and then we oh, we need to plug them in. So what you do is we're going to time times the um, or multiply the distance by frequency. And then we're going to multiply the result of the sine function by the amplitude. So now when I drag the frequency, you can see that we you can see exactly what's happening. So we're generating this sine wave that travels out from every point until it runs into, you know, another sine wave. So this is basically it. Um, we're going to make this same thing, but in 3D space um, for a cube. And instead of moving the points up on the y-axis, which is what we're doing here, we're going to use it to drive the density in a volume. So to do that, we're going to need cube 
And then if we take the cube and we're going to take our scatter and we're going to scatter some points on its surface. So we just zoom in. Okay, and then you can see we have the cube and we have the scattered points on the surface. And then we're going to make a VDB from polygons. There we go. We don't want the cube to be a, a distance VDB, we want it to be a fog VDB named density. And we'll just take the voxel size down just a little bit. So it's 0 0.01. And then we need a volume wrangle. And a volume wrangle is just like a point wrangle, except instead of running over the points, it's going to run over every single voxel that's in this volume. And we can actually use most of the same code. So if we copy it over like this, and we hit the button to get our controls, um, frequency of one. And what we're going to do is instead of at p.y, it's going to be at density. And then if we check bind each volume to density, and we plug these in, And we just have to up the frequency a little bit. You'll see that we get something similar to our end result. Okay, so what we now need to do is we need to convert this density volume back into a assigned distance field. So we do that with a convert VDB like this. And we're going to convert uh, from fog to SDF. There we go. And then we're going to convert that VDB again and this time we're going to convert straight to polygons and you might be wondering why we went to an SDF first rather than just going straight to polygons and it's because what we can do here is just in between we can add a VDB smooth SDF and that'll just give us a, a slightly smoother nicer result another thing that's going to really improve the result is taking this voxel size down even lower than 0.01 but it really, really starts to slow things up. So I'm not going to do that for the tutorial. So to color it, we can use basically the exact same uh, information, the distance from each point to drive a, a color gradient. So we do that with a point angle. We can basically copy this exact code inside like this. Amplitude of one. And I think we have the frequency to, to 64. So if we set the frequency to 64, and then instead of the density, we say at CD. And actually, we don't need to times by the amplitude this time. It's unimportant. We do need to just change the output of this sine wave. A sine wave, as we know, uh, outputs between minus 1 and 1. So we just need to fit this. Instead of being from minus 1 to plus 1, minus 1 to 1, we need to fit it between 0 and 1. And that's just because the color value is obviously between 0 and 1. And there we go, we didn't plug in the scatter, so we need the points. And then right now, our um, frequency here is basically the same as this one, which means that for each one of these sine waves, uh, we're looping through the color spectrum. But we don't want to do that. We want to divide it by two. And you see that's going to give us two loops for each sine wave. And we can use this to drive um, a shader in Redshift. So I'll show you how to do that. So if we go to our material view, and then we're going to make a RS uh, material builder. And we're going to call the material box. And then if we go to, uh, or we make an RS material like that. And now we need to make an attribute node, point attribute node. So our point attribute node is going to read CD, which is the color. And we're going to pass it into the diffuse color and then put this into the surface. And actually, we probably want a ramp. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to 0.5 exactly. And I'm going to set both of these to be constant and then if we assign this material to our object so if we go to here and we just type in uh, map and then the name of the object and then if I fire up the render view and there we have it with color and yeah if we go into the material by changing the colors in the ramp we can change these colors so we can make it orange 
There we go. So, okay, stop the render view. And one thing you might want to do is to animate it. So to do that, object and the scene view again. And what we're going to do is inside here with the distance, we're just going to put it in brackets and we're going to add to it at time. So what's going to happen if we look at this wrangle, you see as we scrub, you can see that we're actually animating through the phase. Let's just say times time 0.2. There we go. And then what we need to do is we also need to take this and we need to add it to the color as well. Just like that. There we go. And now this is very, very slow, but you can see it does work. <laughs> um, right. So that about concludes the tutorial, really. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any uh, other things you'd like to see me do a tutorial on, just let me know in the comments or get me on Instagram. And um, I hope this helps somebody learn something. So um, thank you very much for watching and bye-bye.